Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Boozer here. In today's video, we're gonna go over my Mighty Uko builds. I realized I never actually made a um, dedicated video for him just to showcase him. And I figured since we have this um, current ongoing training event for his four star soul um, active right now, uh, I figured it's a good time to create uh, my build video for him. So you can see here, the first place winner gets a four star Uko, which gives you additional stats. Um, although as a debuffer, it's you can live without the four. I think the most important one is probably, obviously like the five, six, or the three maybe. The four just gives you more stats. So the four is not necessarily the most important. You could live with the three. Um, currently, I'll show you guys my Mighty Uko build. But first, let's hop over to his kit. So his kit here, he's got an AoE A1. He's got a 75% chance of placing attack down. Really, really strong A1. Um, his A2, he removes. He attacks twice. He has 100% chance to remove two buffs. It can weak hit though, so keep that in mind. So it has 100% chance to remove two buffs uh, from the target. Each hit, so that's up to four buffs. And then it places the block de block buffs, debuffs, and a decreased accuracy for two turns when they have no buffs. So there's a little bit of a small issue here with, for example, Hydra. So Hydras, when they spawn, they have a unremovable buff on them. Uh, there's also other cases where they have um, unremovable buffs, which then would block this ability, which is kind of interesting. It's like this move was created to be weaker against Hydra, but it just seems like a weird interaction that works against Uko in Hydra. But make no mistake, Uko is still an excellent, excellent Hydra champion. So moving on, we also have a four turn cooldown, uh, full team revive with 40% HP and block damage. Block damage is really good, gives them a chance to get a turn back. Uh, if you don't want to revive your team, you also can place a increased speed on your whole team. Um, instead of reviving so it's kind of like a dual dual function move so you can go team revive or increase speed uh, if your team is fully revived so it's kind of it's useful um, it makes it a little bit harder to use if it's on auto um, because they will prioritize using this team buff and then you kind of waste your revive so make sure you can be careful about that uh, his passive also incredibly good it passively uh, has a chance 50% chance to steal um, random buffs from the enemy it's very annoying so for example when you have like a duchess for example and then you buff your whole team the uko will attempt to steal uh, the buffs that you place on your team and yeah they are protected when they are stolen so super annoying passive 20% uh, speed in all battles awesome okay um, and this is the build I got from, I'm going to show you guys two builds, uh, different functions, but they can work in both areas. So this is my arena build, my arena Uko, He's currently a two star blessing. So I will be shooting for the four star, uh, trying to win the reward from the four star, uh, to get the extra stats. But this is my Uko. um, he's in a stun, stun set. I think most people prefer him in a stun set. Um, I use him for live arena mainly and some Hydra, lower difficulty Hydra. Um, so with the sunset, sunset, stun set, he will A1 and place chance to stun. He will, since he has AOEs, he'll A2 and then have chance to stun. So the stun set gives you a 18% chance uh, per move, basically. He was nerfed recently where this double hit was triggering the 18% twice but now it only triggers once so that's still fine but a slight nerf there to Uko uh, I have him set up with uh, counter attack accessories so uh, these are called revenge accessories you get them from the clan shop so this will give him extra chance to place uh, counter attacks with a one extra chance to stun you get an extra 5% chance so when he gets hit um, and uh, yeah I have him built relatively fast but not insanely fast i've seen like 300 plus speed ukos in stun sets i mean that's really strong stun gear however in my build i did focus a bit on uh, resistance so resistance works well for hydra as well as uh, live arena so resistance the main role for resistance is to prevent uko from getting sheeped 
So Uko has so many debuffs in his kit and he's going to be spamming those debuffs. He has a high chance of getting sheeped. So a little bit of resistance will help prevent that. Uh, you don't need too much because you won't be able to resist true debuffers with high accuracy. So you mainly want to resist um, champions with like residual accuracy that can place um, sheep. For example, like I'll give you an example here. My my Sifi by accident has 220 accuracy. I didn't build any accuracy into her. If I see an accuracy substat, I'll glyph it up to give her more accuracy. But this gives her a chance to place the sheep debuff that she has on her. But um, so this goes back to what I'm saying about Uko. So you want enough resistance to basically prevent a champion like my Sifi from placing sheep on himself. So anywhere between 300 to 400 will cover a champion with around 200 accuracy. Uh, I chose to go north of 400 because I want him to be able to resist the Hydras in Nightmare. So I have 455 resistance from my bonuses for Hydra. So this, um, I factored that in uh, into my build, of course. Um, it's actually quite hard to get the stats speed, all the stats needed for him um, from my stun gear is actually not very good. Um, I, I could squeeze maybe a bit more, like a bit more speed from glyphs and all that. Uh, my reaction or accessory, uh, react revenge accessories weren't awesome as well on him, so I did use a five star um, amulet here, for example. Masteries here, I have uh, currently mastery set up for Hydra. It's going down to War Master. Um, I will change these masteries if I get a better blessing on him. So if I get the four star when I when I get more more stats, I will change these um, masteries on him. Uh, it looks like I will also probably change the blessing as well. So for uh, Hydra content, you want him in Brimstone. Gives you extra HP on the 2-star, extra HP accuracy on the 4-star. But I will probably change this to a more dedicated arena build. So for example, I will probably go with Sheep myself. Um, just to give him some extra chance to play Sheep and help our team in live arena. Uh, but for PvP, you'll probably still want to keep Brimstone. Uh, you could also go with uh, temporal chains for some extra accuracy as well and some some speed manipulation. All right, let's hop over to my PVE build that I use mainly for Hydra, and uh, you guys can check out the differences on that Uko. All right, so we're on my other account. So this is my PVE Uko. Basically, I use this one mainly for Hydra. Of course, I use him for some arena content as well, but. He is mainly used for Hydra. He's in a Provoke set. So another CC set, it's a 30% chance to land a Provoke, so it's higher than the stun set. However, getting Provoke means Uko will get hit. This doesn't uh, work very well for Uko because Uko is not necessarily going to be built uh, with super high tanky stats. So he can die sometimes, but you do have a higher percent of controlling the enemy wave. Uh, or the Hydra in this case. So the Provoke set I found very, very useful uh, for Uko, especially with his AoEs to land a Provoke on the um, Head of Decay for Hydra, uh, which you definitely need, especially if you don't have things that um, automatically kind of passively provoke champions like, uh, for example, like Cantra or like Chris, who has a just built-in uh, Provoke in his set, uh, in his kit. Um, so Uko uh, with the provoke set I find very useful against Hydra. So these are total stats on him. I focus on accuracy, speed, and HP. Obviously HP you need for uh, survivability against the Hydra heads. And for the blessing it's going to be 100% brimstone. You have a small 15% chance to land brimstone but you get lots of attacks, lots of AoEs. So you will be able to land brimstone with Uko relatively consistently. As for the masteries I did go down to War Master here on the t6 uh, masteries uh spirit haste it's like spirit haste he is a reviver so if your team's down the haste does help give him some an extra boost so you can get the revive back up uh master hexer for the extension of his uh debuffs he has lots of debuffs so it's really good um i was mentioning if you're playing the stun set you would probably go down to fearsome presence so you wouldn't run war master so if you if you were playing strictly arena you would go down to fearsome presence fearsome presence does boost the chance of your stun set um and your provoke set as well as increase your chance of placing sheep debuff so 
it's a it's a great mastery for Uko in particular because that's the way you're going to be building him with all those uh, different crowd control uh, abilities. Um, so defense tree and support tree would be um, preferred for a arena um, Uko, and this would be the set for a Hydra Uko. Uh, not too much going on here. My provoke gear is not the best. But uh, we managed to get him above 250 speed with 80k HP and enough um, Hydra accuracy to land its debuffs. I usually use them in Brutal. Um, but yeah, we'll hop over to uh, some arena action with the stun set Uko and I'll show you guys how annoying he can be. Alright, so here's a team here. It's a bunch of CC and Haruma. Um, we'll do some warm-ups here. I know this uh, this team isn't the plat level or anything like that, but we'll do some warm-ups here and... Uh, See how it goes. But I can see that this team is going to be super annoying for anybody to deal with. So on offense, we go lockout. And then we're just going to steal all their buffs. Uh, you see the stun landing there. Super annoying as well. Alright, let's start cranking out some damage. Harma cranks out. Alright. Everybody CC'd. Let's check out the attack down, attack down placed. Yep, very, very strong. And resisted. Did you guys see that resistance on the uh, on the Sun Wukong there? So a little bit of resistance helps, uh, prevents getting sheeped himself as well as uh, other debuffs. Uh, let's go for another team here. If I go for, let's try this team. We're going to get outsped maybe, but we're going to work up to some uh, stronger competition here. Nope, we're not going to get outsped. Got the lockout in, and then we'll be doing the lock buffs. No stuns here. And Harma cleans up. Okay, let's move on. That wasn't really a fight. Uh, okay, let's do this. We got some two cleansers here. We even got a six-star uh, Pytheon with the with the uh, brimstone here. Let's see what happens here. Let's see if we can do anything against this Mithrala. So Mithrala um, cannot resist the... Um, the stun debuff. Um, so he needs uh, immunity or um, stone skin to prevent the stun debuff. So that's what makes it so strong too. And she resists Warlord. So it does have high accuracy. I don't expect any debuffs to land from Uko unless you get the stun off. Does get the stun off Mithrala. That's one of the best things about having Mithrala. Having the stun set on on uh, a champ. Um, going to sleep her. And let's see if we can crank damage out on him. Oh, just a little bit off. Just a little bit off here. Does Uko get a turn again? Uh, let's sleep her. And she's stunned again. She's stunned again. There we go. That should be it. We see the power of the double, the stun, the stun gear on Uko. We see the power there. Stunning Mithrala with clearly way more resistance. He resisted my Warlord, which has 700 uh, accuracy, so at least 800, uh, at least 800 resistance on that Mithrala. So there's no chance that Uko was sticking any of the debuffs, but the stun set landed on her twice, 18% uh, chance each time, and it was enough to basically sh shut her down. Again, Mithrala here. We're going to do um, Mithrala against a bunch of champions that play some really strong buffs. And let's see how Uko does here. Obviously, he's going to be deployed against teams that have lots of buffs that you want to, that you want to steal or prevent. We land some stuns, but it gets cleansed by Mithrala, who's the big cleanser here. Let's start launching some attacks. Um, let's increase and decrease our defense. I'm going to shut him down. So we don't get unkillable placed. And then let's see if we can get some more stuns here. No stuns. Everybody resisted. Some pretty good resistance on these champions. Again, going to shut him down. Try to kill the reviver. Okay, let's see here. Beefy. Shut her down. Um, hmm. I'm likely going to get hexed. So I'm just going to go speed up here into the AoE which will not kill <laughs> which does not kill Duchess and Warlord has to clean him up uh, once again we're going to shut him down don't really want to deal with the unkillable yet let's see if we can get some stuns here nope we get hexed oh, we get petrified sorry okay we're going to lock him down 
lock her down. Very annoying team. All right. Looks like we are back into it. Uh, let's get that defense up going here. Okay. And we'll start cranking out some damage. Does not. Oh, we have defense down. So, of course, it's not going to be enough to kill him. Okay, shut her down. And yeah, they have definitely more resistance. So this is the issue with trying to use lower accuracy against, um, yeah, trying to get your debuffs off. So if you have lower accuracy and you're fully relying on um, the stun set to land the debuffs, you're obviously going to be slightly less consistent uh, when that happens. So okay, let's see if we can land any stuns. We do land a stun here. Shut down Mithrala. Lockdown. And it should be over here. Alright, so moving on. So a little bit slower, but this is a little bit more of a tanky survival team. Obviously, the Oris is a good nuker to survive. But we shut him down pretty good. Alright, let's go to our next fight. Trying to pick on some teams with, uh, with some uh, buffs to steal or buffs to remove. So let's remove the Warlord since the Warlord is pretty much locking him down. We'll play Necrit here so we ensure that we do have a turn and uh, we can survive a blast. Okay, see if he should be fast enough to go first. All right, let's see if we can steal some of these buffs. And we fully locked him down. We got three stuns off, super annoying. And Arma comes in with the big slam. This guy, Brago, is just crying. He's like, I'm done. Finish me off. Okay, moving on. So a little bit of word of warning here. You don't want to fight uh, more twos. You definitely don't want to fight more twos because obviously Ukos have so much AoE. It's going to cause a big problem. Um, also another problem would be Mithrala if you don't have like a block debuff or cleanser yourself. Um, and since you're running a stun set but not a speed uh, team necessarily, you have to be careful about getting outsped. So you have to choose some slower fights. Uh, so we'll see if we can find something else a little bit, uh, a little bit stronger. Same thing here, we got the more two here. We don't want to deal with the more twos. Speed team, speed team. Let's try this one. We have to go through the ultimate death knight. Maybe in stone skin or something like that. Let's see what happens here. We mainly want to showcase the effectiveness of stun set and all these debuffs being placed without ever getting sheeped, of course. So uh, let's try to blast through him. He goes down relatively easily. And then that's it. Don't necessarily need to use Harma here. I have using Harma because defense based champion with the um, Sifi. Alright, moving on. A bunch of speed teams here. Okay, let's see. Um, I mean, we can try to fight this Mortu, um, but the Mortu might be a little nasty to us and try to kill one of our guys, but we'll try here. Pretty high power team. He's got some, um, got some buffs. See if we can strip them. Probably not, so we have to rely on the stone, uh, on the stun gear, sorry. Um, I think we just go buff and then he's going to do that. We can remove the block debuff. Oh, he's in a protection set. We don't remove anything. So we might have met our match. He's in a protection set. So all his buffs will be protected. Oh no, we're getting targeted too. Um... What do we steal from him? We stole his attack up. So here's the risk with Uko when you're fighting um, Mortu is all his moves have AOE, which will trigger the um, passive from Mortu. So usually against um, AI, the AI always targets my Haruma. So I don't really need to worry too much about Mortu killing uh, somebody that is weak. Like for example, this Mortu would never kill my Haruma because Maharma is just strong enough to withstand the more two hits with shield and protection, of course. 
Um, so it should be a non-issue, but this is going to be a relatively long fight, I think. And we get debuffed ourselves. <laughs> we get sheeped ourselves. So, yeah, this is not uh, not a very good uh, example. <clears throat> um, yeah. All right. All right, I refresh the page. Let's see if we can find something else that we kind of is more suitable again more to here these teams are kind of let's go with this one turbo we got some buffs we have a cleanser here that we can try to deal with so let's do this okay so it's arbor okay so he does have buffs here so let's see if we can steal anything we did steal one uh block t buff which is kind of nice we end up placing the stun there as well, we try to kill off the Torvit, it's her vault, and our nuclear finishes the job. Okay, so, anyways, you guys kind of get the gist. The stun set on Uko is incredibly good. Um, placing uh, count revenge accessories on Uko will make him even more effective in, in case he gets outsped. So, getting some extra attacks in with the revenge accessories if you got them. If you got a good retaliation set and you can hit some decent stats, that gives you an extra 15% chance to counterattack as well. So this is my build for Arena and then I also have a build for um, for Hydra. So in Hydra I use the uh, Provoke set. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, in the comments below. Uh, how are you guys using your Uko? I think this is a pretty uh, popular build. One of my first builds, I put him in Stone Skin as my Reviver, but I realized that his main role is actually to be super annoying with a stun set, and his stun set, stun setting, uh, stun ability would be even stronger if I use Fearsome, Fearsome Presence for an extra 5% as well. So keep that in mind if you guys are using him for Arena specifically, but of course, if you're using him for Hydra, you want him in Brimstone. Uh, with his multiple AOEs, he has a really good chance of landing it. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments below. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, best of luck on your training events if you guys are going for the Uko Soul. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.